What's up, squad? I'm your co-host, Steve Cardi. And I'm Nick Scopoletti. And this is the Strength Squad Podcast. Welcome. Uh, we have a dope episode for you guys this week. Uh, we interviewed Don Saladino. The Don. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but he's he was on the cover of uh, Muscle Fitness Magazine. Mm-hmm. Pretty big deal. Celebrity trainer. Uh, trains the likes of like Ryan Reynolds. He's trained Hugh Jackman. He's trained Scarlett Johansson. Like he's, been on, he's been on the Strength Squad podcast, most, just to most name notably, a few. Just to name notably. a few. Yeah. <laughs> Before we start here, guys, though, we're going to start this thing off right with a dad joke. Mm. So, Nick. Yes. <laughs> love this one. <laughs> Inspecting mirrors is something I could really see myself getting into. Yeah. That's it. Oh. Inspecting mirrors oh, to see myself. It. I was like, I thought there yeah. was like, are your pants mirrors? Because I could see myself in them. Mm. <laughs> this, is, this is kids what listen to this man. Keep- <laughs> no, they don't. Yeah, it's a little inappropriate. <laughs> Adult children listen to this. <laughs> I guess. Quick announcements before we start here, guys. Um, first and foremost, first and foremost, go to our YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube. Leave some comments, leave some likes, tell us what you like, what you don't like. Check out our iTunes, check out our Stitcher, same thing. Five-star review, four-star review minimum. (laughs) Let us know what you like. Let us know all the fun things that we've done that you enjoy and the fun things that you want to see from us. And then go to all of our social media. Make sure you guys go like our Facebook page. Uh, Go follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, then follow us to our cars. Uh, what else every, for every week announcements? It's pretty much um, it, right? Um, yeah, plant man. warrior protein. If Those. you want some good old fashioned plant warrior protein in your <laughs> belly, <laughs> if you're sick of that way fucking you up, yeah, no way. Go to plantwarrior.co. Any purchase, use the promo code strength10, yeah, and that'll give you a 10% discount. Mm, fuck you. <laughs> Uh, I think it's about time to slide into those DMs, send some news. So, yeah. Nick, tell us to send news for this week. What do we Our got? What send do we got for the people? news for this week is from Don Saladino's website. Um, yeah, it it is. is about, usually, you know, we do like the training stuff. We get into that in the podcast, like the science of it. But the fun stuff, right? We're talking about, this article is just about um, how, to ha- how to not have a hangover, at least <laughs> deaden the, the effects of drinking alcohol. Um, he gives some great points in there just about what to eat before, how to hydrate during, what to do after, um, even workouts. Um, he talks about, you know, one of the things was like, do you, should you work out the next day? He's like, sweat it out, do something crazy. Don't put, you know, don't do something crazy. Just push yourself a little bit. Um, but you'll go in there, you just read the whole thing. It's got some great, um, bullet points and it's, uh, it's pretty dope. Listen to Don. He's a smart guy. He's smart. He's ripped. He's handsome. Yeah. Uh, speaking of listening to Don, we got Don coming up next. Yeah. So what we're going to do, guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we're going to get into our interview with Don Saladino. Yeah, and real quick, just want to thank everyone at Drive. Kim, who set it up. Don, for being cool as fuck and um, real hospitable and letting us take two to three waters. I don't know how we got so many waters. <laughs> got like what, five waters somehow. I don't know what happened, but uh, had some Garden of Life bars. But thank you. You guys were super... Yeah, super nice. Thanks, uh, Drive 495. For Thank real. you. Everyone was real cool. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to take a quick break, everybody. When we come back, we're going to get into our interview with Don Saladino. Want more of the Strength Squad? You can check out all of our social media on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, check us out on YouTube where you can watch all of your favorite Strength Squad videos. Don't forget to leave a five star review on iTunes and Stitcher. Stitcher, I just met her. We would like to thank our friends at Plant Warrior Protein official sponsor of the Strength Squad podcast. 
Plant Warrior plant-based protein is easier on your stomach and contains a complete amino acid profile that helps you grow, maintain, and repair your muscles. It gives you 18 grams of protein per serving, and it's made from a blend of rice, pea, and hemp. Plant Warrior pledges to plant one tree for every item you purchase at their online store. Head over to plantwarrior.co, that's plantwarrior.co, and use the promo code STRENGTH10 to get 10% off of your purchase. That's promo code STRENGTH10 for 10% off of any Plant Warrior purchase. Oops, I was genetically <laughs> gifted. No, I am. I actually work hard, man. I, I'm not saying no you don't. Shit. I'm not saying you don't. But you know what? I, I, I've definitely, um, you know, you battle it sometimes. I mean, last night I'm at the diner with my daughter and I'm, I'm eating something really healthy, which typically even eating out for me is like a big deal. But, yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm just going to get fucking waffles. And I wanted to get waffles. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what, though? I'm going to leave here in 15 minutes. I hate myself. I'm just going to be pissed. It's <laughs> not my day to do it. So I'll normally kind of put aside my days to do things. I'm, I'm very regimented like that. So if I'm. So you got the structure going? I got the structure going. Like I allow myself, like, there's my buddy's weddings a week from Friday. We're mm-hmm. going to go hit it. Like, that's time to hit it. Oh, yeah. Get there. But when, like, when it's time, like, well, I just shot, you know, I just, mm. my, my cover of muscle fitness launched in March. Oh, I'm sure that's a different, yeah. That's like, you know, I'm going through the holidays and it was just, I'm not even going to say it was brutal. I love it. Like, for me, that's fun. Like, I'm going to family dinners. I'm going to. <laughs> Got your Tupperware. Oh, yeah. But it's like. <laughs> Everyone's eating like, lasagna. How, how, yeah. They're like, how hard is that? I'm like, it's easy. It's easy for me because it's hard for everyone else. And it's just kind of how I think. Yeah. And it's just, for me, nutrition and training, it's not anything that's ever been difficult. It's just, I love it. But. I also love doing things, you know, enjoying yeah, life yeah, and fucking fun. Fun. <laughs> yeah, fucking fun. Yeah, it almost it makes it easier though, because it's it's just making the choice for you, you know. Yeah, yeah, basically. So makes it easy. a little easier. Easy, easy stuff. Are right, you ready to rock? <clears throat> ready. You ready to go, dude? Dude, I'm always ready. All right, <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> I'm always ready. It's from my island, they don't fuck I don't around. Even need any fucking coffee. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> let's go. Do you even drink coffee? I do. It's scary. A lot. Holy, no, not a lot. I'll have like a cup. Oh, okay. I'll okay. like eight ounces a day, if that, or I'll, I'll I'll take like months off. I'll just be like, right, I'm not gonna drink coffee. Oh, you're I've just done, coffee cycle. Yeah, I'm nice. just like, all I right, a year off. off once. Wow, that's a lot. I mean, I have, <laughs> he's like, 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 he's like, what what the the fuck fuck you? I didn't drink coffee till I was 25, 26. I was living in the city, and I would like, I wouldn't. Late drink. bloomer, probably I same. Just, yeah, yeah, 24, I think I started. Probably. Yeah. I heard. Now I'm like, why the fuck did I do that? I was cracked out on monsters from ages 18 to 20. That's hard. I drank Jolt. Remember oh, Jolt? Jolt. Holy Remember that? When I, was, when I was a kid, that's twice the sugar, man. I, mean, I was like, when I was a kid, I didn't know. I was like, fuck it. Twice the sugar is Coke. It's got to be good for you. Great. I just drank two Four Locos before every workout. That's crazy. So that's... I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be dead. I'd be dead. I, I think most humans would be dead, yeah. I never had one. I had a roommate in college that would, they would always drink Four Locos. He's like, dude, I woke up at 6 a.m. My heart was pounding. I threw up. And, I was like, and he would do it every weekend. I was like, the fuck's wrong with you, man? Like, why do you keep drinking it? He's like, I'm going to do it again this weekend. <laughs> that's conversations I've had with friends of mine who are like addicts. Like, that's a bad yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your friend wants to go see someone right now. Help, like, bro. You're you fucked help. up. He's messed. You got a problem. <laughs> All right, crew. We're here with Don Saladino. Don, how you doing? Yeah, feeling good. Flex it up, dude. Flex no, it up. I feel like good. a superhero, man. <laughs> I, feel good. I feel good. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for bringing yeah. me. <laughs> bringing you to your gym that you own. Love it. <laughs> Always happy. New environment, new light over here. Very That's why. Nice. Yeah, we wanted to come in person. We love the city. I appreciate Cities that. Fucking great. Thank you, Thank you for um, having us. Happy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wanted to say thanks for having us. Your gym is awesome. It's super long. Like it's real long. Hey, yo, we just met, man. Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> you hearing this guy? What's up, Chris? We had like five minutes in the bathroom before this. We just, we just met. <laughs> <laughs> he's married do you see his hand you see his hand is that ring she doesn't What's get the... jealous though so she's, okay she's, cool she's, cool, she's, cool. She's out <laughs> so we're here at drive 495 in soho mm-hmm. new york new york city hell yeah <laughs> drove down from hartford connecticut today. yeah we're here man paid fifty thousand dollars for parking <laughs> <laughs> that cheap the guy i was like yo what's this all day special sixteen dollars like no nah, it's for half hour yeah, i yeah, was like, like no. what the fuck Word, dude those are for you goes those are for like mini compact cars that always drive around. <laughs> they always screw you with the suv i have, I have a pickup so you bring it in you got They're a like, pickup i got a dodge do you Ram. drive into the city i used to drive a lot and then i um i grew up and i realized that the train is <laughs> way that. well i love driving but you know i don't Coming in's easy, yeah. but then going home when you're stuck in traffic two and a half, three hours, you're like, Well, you, li- you live in Long Island, correct? I live in Long Island now. I lived in the city for 13 years. I started working in Manhattan in 1999. 
went right. off and got a job at Equinox uh, for a year. <laughs> heard <laughs> of them. Heard and of then them. Uh, yeah, heard of them. And then I and it was <laughs> it was it was cool because I left right after they got taken over and they went corporate. Mm -hmm. Started my own personal training practice. Practice like I'm a doctor. I know personal training. <laughs> Don right, Salino, so, MD. MD, MD, PT. Uh, Muscular development, MD. Started my own personal training business in the city, but I was, I was doing well. I was 22 years old. I was making some good money. I was going home to home. I controlled my own schedule, and yeah. I just, but I wanted so much more beyond that. I wanted to have my own business. I wanted to eventually develop a brand, and that's kind of what I'm doing now. Nice. Yeah, I think you've done it. I think you're on the way. I'm trying. <laughs> I think you've done it. Thank you. Thank and you. And so what's your like, like lifting background, athletic background? How'd you get into all this? Yeah, I was, you know, I mean, going back to high school, I want to spend a lot of time there, but you know, I was a four sport <laughs> athlete in high school, played uh, collegiate baseball, uh, tried to uh, take the next step after that, just didn't work out. But you know, it was funny around that time where I had some big tryouts, some pro team tryouts. I just remember being like, all right, well, if I have to go try out here, where am I going to get my workout? It was like, it became, I became <laughs> so obsessed over it. Really. It was like, yeah, it was yeah. like Training obviously became number one. And then um, just at that time, there wasn't like talking about personal trainers. It wasn't really something anyone knew about. This is 99. Oh, so yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, I went out and got into certification back then. It was like the East Coast Training Institute. It was like something like that. And then you went off and you get your <laughs> that some dude's garage in Long no, Island? No, actually, you know, it was funny. Like even looking back on it now, it was like a six or seven month certification. Which you think to yourself, like, when have you ever had to go get a training? That's certificate? intensive, dude. dude. It was like, no, <laughs> yeah. it was it was like going to school. And to this day, I look back on it, and I'm like, I learned really good stuff there. Yeah. And I wonder if it still exists. I I don't know. I didn't renew it. I mean, it was just one of those things where <laughs> I remember going for like six months and meeting six some cool people. Months. But it was like going to like summer school and going Got several you. nights a week. Like they made you dive in it. And then at that point, you know, I ended up getting a hundred certifications and. You know, it's just, as you know, a certification is a certification, is a piece of paper. Now I, I do my continuing education and you get no notoriety for the stuff you go listen to. Like I'm in a room no. with Charlie Weingroff every, every week for a couple hours and <laughs> yeah. wow, that's, that's pretty good right there. And I just having him as my, as a, as a tool in the tool. I'm like, Charlie, I, I text Charlie, I don't know how many times a week just cause he's such a good buddy of mine. But also when I want to bounce things off of him, like, what do you think of this? And dude, he's been, he's been just, even for me, like I've seen, we had him on the show, but like I've watched training equals rehab, the third one, yeah, probably sad. like three times. I had to sad. like, he's smart. So I had to like, I was like, all right, let me rewatch this. I can't even tell like when newbies come to me, I can't even tell them to go hear him. I, I normally just say, all right, well in time, <laughs> you will be ready for this. <laughs> you will be wise enough. And not deluding anyone else, but Charlie's like, he's a coach of coaches. I mean, he's, he really you know, is. And when, really like, is. I was just about to say, like, I've just emailed him, like, and like, I've had questions, multiple questions oh, after training equals rehab. I'm like, so confused sometimes he's and he lays best. it out for you and he gets he's, back to you quickly. He's the best. Yeah. He's, he's a good been, dude. He's man. been a great source for me. He's been a great friend and, um, I, I can't say a better thing about him. Yeah. So. And he got him here. Yeah, luckily. I mean, I even remember the conversation. It was like six, seven years ago. One of my ex trainers here who I, who I loved, Anthony Connors, um, brought him in here and, um, you know, at, at the time, I didn't think it was, you know, I was just like, all right, well, this isn't going to work, like this and that. And it just, it worked. It, it worked. And him and I just, I think, gained, I think he'll admit, we gained a good respect for each other. And, you know, there were certain things that I helped him out with on business. And there was a ton that he helped me out with on training. And it just, it just evolved. And now we just, it's like sign language. We just kind of look at each other and we're just like, okay, we know That's what we expect awesome. of each other. And this is a really nice thing. And we got each other's back. And like, again, it's turned into a great friendship also. So. Yeah. Hell yeah. Absolutely. So talk about here a little bit, uh, drive yeah. 495, mm -hmm. your gym, what you're doing now professionally, um, just kind of give the rundown, feel free to brag. Also like how it got started. Cause <laughs> the story you've told, I think it performed better. Like your I story. told that it performed better. Yeah. The first couple of years, I'm like, I was like, I'm done oh, telling shit. you. I'm done telling <laughs> Two Time years in a row. row. I'm done. Two years <laughs> row. I'm done. I'm done telling them. $10. But um, yeah, no, uh, you know, it started a lot because of um, me and my love for training, but also my brother Joe was a professional golfer turned amateur. It was an exceptional player, exceptional amateur player. And um, I started working on him from a fitness standpoint back in like 95. And he was a really like scrawny kid. And yeah. then I just started seeing him nuke the golf ball and he had back pains and doctors were like, well, you have spondylolisthesis and you know, you'll never squat and, you know, typical <laughs> never shit. Golf you, 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 never golf again. You'll never brush your teeth again. You know, so it's, um, you know, you, you get those diagnoses and you're just like, okay. But then we worked on him and he, I mean, went from like 150 pounds to 180 pounds and just became crazy long off the tee. And we saw all this positive stuff. Went out to Greg Rose, met Greg Rose at uh, TPI. Um, yep. When I say a long time ago, I mean, I had this place open almost 13 years. I met Greg a year or so. When Greg started TPI, mm -hmm. I went out there. Greg assessed me. Like when I went through Yo. the screening and the assessment, Greg was there like doing the vertical test on me and doing a leg Damn. press test on me. And it was like a long time ago. And he's like, all right, dude, like 
what are you doing? Are you a golf? Like you're, you're not, I'm like, no, I'm like a new, at the time I was a 25 <laughs> handicap. Now I'm like probably like a seven or eight handicap, but I, you know, I, I'm like, no, I'm not here to play pro golf. Like I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm like, like, look at me. It's like, not what I want to do. my brother, but I'm, I'm yeah. here cause I like the game and I want to learn about this. And then when we came back to the States, we said, wow, that'd be really cool to kind of do a TPI in New York city. There's 8 million people. If you get 200 members at five grand a month, a uh, five grand a year, Jesus, five grand a month would be great. Five grand a year, I was like, good. I was like, are you guys hiring? Or? Yeah, we'd be, we'd, be, we'd, be doing, we'd be doing pretty well. But you know, the model changed. I mean, we, we started out of the gate. It was it was slow at membership. We went bonkers on the corporate events. Like the corporate events started rolling in. We have an event space upstairs. Yeah, I really that. was a way to sustain our, our business for a while. And in about 07, 08, we saw everything go on with Lehman Brothers and go and um not Goldman, uh, Bear Stearns. Yeah, them shit just tank. crashed. Just yeah. crashed. And we were just, I, I think it was probably the smartest move. My brother and I just said, we were like, listen, we got to call, we got to call an audible and we got to do something here. And we did. And it took a few years for us to kind of get things back and going. And I mean, honestly, it's been 13 years since we're open. And I just feel like this last year to two years, we really gained a lot of momentum. Like right now, my, my, my new sales guy, JT, who might be back there, he's, He's just killing it, and uh, you know our digital platform's up and going, and social media is pumping, and we've got you know, all this great stuff going on with brands. But man, it took a long time. This was not like oh, we found success in three, four years. There was so much volatility and so much up and downs that so many up and downs that I think what we really became good at was knowing that you got to pivot when things are bad, yeah. and not to sit there and develop so much of an ego where you say to yourself, oh, well, you know, I'm doing this, and this is our model, and evolve at the times you know you got to do a lot of businesses yeah. don't do that they think what worked for them 15 years ago is going to work for them now it's the biggest mistake that i've seen so yeah, yeah. interesting um and talk about uh you said something interesting <clears throat> knowing when to pivot or how to pivot yeah how did you do that you know like this this That's seems a, to have been a long process it's so a great qu it's a great question first of all i think it's because we have humility so you take know, the ego out of yeah, it yeah take the ego out of it but like when do you know with any project that all right i've kind of overstayed my welcome and the perfect example I give is when someone contacts me about gym membership. So like, can I see your membership numbers? And I'm like, sure, but you're in Wyoming. Like, it's not, <laughs> like, dude, don't look at my membership numbers. Don't look at what I charge per client and think that that's what you're going to pull. And it doesn't mean I'm better than you. you might you're, you're talking about like other gym owners. I'm, I'm talking about other gym owners, but I'm giving an example of when things aren't working out. Yeah. There's a, there's a period of time you've got to really sit and, and just say to yourself, am I doing everything that I can? And if you're not, then you have to pivot. So the example that I'm giving is when someone's coming in and they're like, all right, well, I've been trying this. Uh, I can't get any leads. I'm just giving an example. Yeah, well, yeah. what are you doing for leads? Oh my God, we've been doing paid marketing and we've been doing social media. We got a whole team of people working on this and our price points are fantastic and everything's going. You're not, all right, well, maybe your price points aren't fantastic or maybe the person generating leads aren't good. But what I get a lot of times with people, I'm like, well, I'm not getting sales. Well, how many leads are you getting? Four. You're getting four a month based off of the size club. You got to get some get leads. If you get leads, you'll get more sales. So it's a you numbers, what I'm numbers game. It's a numbers game, but it's also it's kind of like a balancing game of all right. We've we've stayed in this long enough to where we know now this just isn't working, and we got to take a pivot. We got to make a pivot. Gotcha. Do you follow? It? That's I what I mean. It's like how do you know when to to change anything? How do you know when your marriage is just not right? It's like, yeah. it's like, <laughs> anything, know, yeah. Like anything. Like listen, I mean, a lot of couples that I've spoken to in the past. Not to start giving marital advice. I'm married. I'm happily <laughs> married. But a lot of couples in the past are like, yeah, I went through a tough period of time. Oh, yeah. The second things go wrong, are you just going to give up and toss it in and be like, oh, she's a bitch. I'm I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. No. Right. Like all right, yeah. you, you got kids now. You got time vested. Like you got to see if you can together. make this work. But at a certain time, you just realize it's not going to work anymore it's no different with business okay. it's really the same thing and i think it's really like a i know it's a weird like kind of weird way that i'm putting it but it's just no, it makes you've got to be able to kind of step back and say all right this just ain't happening mm. yeah interesting no. so talk about um you know drive 14 five you mentioned it kind of started i would say with like with with like golf you kind of yeah, mentioned golf, it was kind events. of a, is that mainly who you train here or like who do you usually see coming <sighs> wow. in here? you know it's funny it's like if you look at our golf from a profit and loss standpoint you'd be like all right well you make money but it's nowhere near what you make off of training. It's nowhere near what you make off of um, gym memberships. Dump it. Like, just put fitness in. I'm like, no, you don't understand. There's, like, certain values that you just can't, you can't put a price tag on certain things. Like, in this location, 85% of the people came in because there was golf. Now, more of them are training and more of them are utilizing the fitness because how many golf lessons are you going to take a week? Like, if you take two a month, that's a lot. Yeah. But if you take two training sessions a week, okay, probably average for someone who's coming into a club training, roughly, give or give or take, um, the margins are similar. So where are you going to make more money? 
Mm. So, but if I was to remove the golf, you know, you piss off a lot of members and would they leave? I don't know. It's not something I even want to even bother, bother trying. I, I love having that here. I would never put one in another facility when we, if, and when we open another facility, um, just because, you know, it's, it's special here. Yeah. And it's a tough thing to repeat and open in other spots. Yeah, it's not something I really want to focus on yeah. my time on. I got Mark Braziller here focusing on it. He did a phenomenal job, but I want to focus on, you know, what we've been, what's been paying. Yeah, you got a lot going on, man. You got yeah. everything. A lot yeah. of stuff. Garden of life. It's good that stuff, stuff, man. It's great. I'm psyched. <laughs> it's a lot. I'm psyched. <laughs> good it's for a you. Lot, but thank you. Thank you you. kind of have this reputation too now. Um, the celebrity trainer kind sure. of reputation. How did that come about? And how is that like? Hugh Jackman going? was my first guy. Uh, I got him exactly when we were having my my daughter she's going to be 11 in august and i remember because right when we had her he asked me to uh, travel with him and i just couldn't go um and I, I honestly i think i've seen him once since i mean he moved um over on the west side and this place just became a little far to get hard to get to but he referred so many people to me and i, I could probably i can name 20 names right now in hollywood you'd be like holy shit that, that you know scott johansson and ryan reynolds and you know um just gr some great Hollywood names. Yeah, and I think with me it was really simple. There, there wasn't a lot of a, there wasn't any social media back then. It was just yeah. about me. All right, listen, you're here for this, and I'm going to give you that, and I don't need any PR or media, and just built that up. And now, like all the all the PR that I get, it's like it's just extra. I don't. It's not something that I expect. I just I try and do a good job, and they know if I get it, it's a good thing for my business. So they throw me bones every once in a while. It's yeah, just yeah. something nice. that I humbly accept, and it's great. Like Blake Lively just put a, a post out for me recently um she said she lost 61 pounds with me but yep. she said it took 14 months which i loved because it was so honest yeah she was she's like yeah. listen i had a tough time yes. with this that's, a, that's i had a thing. hard time with this that is, is my the thing second with fitness child. man people it's think it's gonna happen like within a week well the problem is is that you have a lot of these internet sensations and they're a joke like they've never yeah, like right. i've been doing this now for almost 20 years i probably trained God. tens of thousands of hours on the floor right um and you got these guys who were like, you know, they have their shirt off and they insta look good. Famous. They're, they're insta famous and, and they take their shirt off and they're like, well, this looks works for me and I do intermittent right, fasting. Right. And so you should do this too. And you're oh, like, oh, I know who you're on. talking about. <laughs> oh, Kino Body. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you were talking about. I just watched one of those videos. <laughs> I, you know, and I'm not one to hate on anyone. I, I still can't get this out of my head. He shot this Patrick Bateman video <laughs> yeah, where it was literally yeah. him in his dad's house with what he, what he was claiming was his girlfriend and I think it was really his sister. He just <laughs> good and he's like sitting there in his underwear and he's like i wake up every day and i have it's like, like you know, psycho. good for him it's working yeah. so I'm, not, I'm, I'm applauding him but i think that's just like oh my god but it's like every ad on youtube like he's but like you gotta shows learn up, something like, no but you know what but you but you but you gotta learn something from a guy like that because the problem is the guys like yourself or me or right, right. Try, everyone's always been so focused on, on on being smart in the industry and being able to give great content and great information you have yes. to do that but you gotta be you have to learn from guys guys out there who who really don't, you know a lot of them don't know much about it and they haven't done this for a career but they understand marketing mm. and the ones who understand marketing are the ones who are winning because now unfortunately you can sell a product that's complete shit <laughs> and be really successful and that's the real that's that's the Dude, world that we live in now i'll tell you we were at the arnold in march yeah what hit there? us what hit us so hard we're standing at um a booth with Jim Wendler's there. Got to meet Jim. Yeah, Wendler. five Talk, through one. Yeah, talking to Jim Wendler. He? Awesome, awesome guy. Yeah, fucking awesome. And I would always think like he's he's, he's, he's crowds. Crowds. I've been reading his crowd. Seems intelligent. <laughs> loves heavy metal. Very um, intelligent. And really and really smart. Really, and I can tell because his programming is so simple. And that's yeah. why I know he's smart. Yeah. Oh <laughs> it's yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah. But like, dude, you should. So we're sitting there with him, with some other people that are like well known in the strength industry, and we're at the Arnold all the expo. But like, <clears throat> everyone's just walking by. You know what I mean? But there's some. Not to be mean, but like some hot chick that's at some booth that yeah. has a hundred thousand followers, sure. and there's a line for two hours to right. meet her. Right. I'm like, yo, no Jim Wendler's right Jim here. Yeah, Jim Wendler's <laughs> right here. Do you know right. who this guy is? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know what? That's unfortunately that's the industry we live in, and we yeah, even see right. it with a lot of the group concepts. You see it with a lot of these boot camps that are opening up and not all of them. I mean, you, you have some independent guys that are opening some really good quality stuff and there's some instructors in any group setting that you can't say every group instructor is bad. No, it's not true. No. Right. But a lot of them get the word I use, we use here is fluffy. It just gets really fluffy because the consumer is relating success with how hard they sweat or how beat up they that's are. That's tough too. And that's too. a tough thing to compete with because now anyone, I can grab someone off the street and in two minutes make them vomit. 
<laughs> wow, but anyone can do that. Like, I, yeah. I, that's like, but now when we're talking about movement screens and we're talking about training as an art, it's almost like, all right, dude, relax. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like we're not, dude, we're not like, everything you're saying right now is like my, that's been me the last two years. Like I'm torn. You're between, fighting it. Yeah. You're fighting because it's a tough I have battle. my FMS, right? I know FRC, you're not gonna win, all man. that stuff. <laughs> but, right, exactly. You should that, get more of those. Do that. <laughs> you're sir, not going to win. functional strength coach here, right. but also... I fucking like West Side Barbell. I yeah, like powerlift. I love, love bodybuilding. Right, yeah. I read Flex Magazine the first <laughs> ten years dude, of my life dude, training. Dude, I'm not I'm like I was like muscle and fitness for me was 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 awesome. I mean that was like growing up. I'm looking at Arnold and Lou and Mike O'Hearn and all these guys, and to be on the cover of that was like an incredible feeling yeah, for sick. me. And to say that I don't go to an airport now and grab those magazines, I'd be lying. Like, so <laughs> we, I think we got to realize as as strength coaches that we are all also a little bit in the entertainment business. And if the client comes in, I don't care if it's the most successful program on the planet if they are not entertained or they are not they're right. like, well, wait a second why do you like with me like with my own programming i probably switch my program up four to five times a year like for yeah, some guys that like would be blocks. a lot kind of i do, do like, blocks yeah. i do blocks of anywhere from like one to four months so if i'm power lifting i might be in a four month block uh, right now charlie's got me on a really cool program that um i don't no one I'll be off that because it's kind of a plug and play and it just keeps going and going and going. Is it the uh, one from training equals rehabs like max effort, dynamic effort? It is, he doesn't do refer to it as max effort. He refers to it as max effort and then easy effort. So he goes okay. max effort Monday, easy effort Thursday. He's got um, cyclic repeat yes. on it's Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Tuesdays, um, more of his cyclic repeat. like 30, 60 crit, seconds. Three, uh, 30, 30 second on, three minute off. Stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, so stuff like like that. But I like using the kettlebell a lot right now. Where in the winter, I was doing a lot more powerlifting. But right now, we're, we're killing the bell. So for me, it really also comes down to if I'm getting a result out of something, that's great. But I also have to be like really psyched to start working on something. I'm like today, like... I practiced. I did gymnastics moves. I was doing get ups. I was doing arm bars. I was doing windmills. You know, um, I'm, I'm like having fun. I'm doing handstand work. Like I'm moving around, but there's some structure to it. But today was a recovery day and I felt great. Now tomorrow is going to be my easy effort singles with 75% of what I did Monday and I'm going to yeah. crank. Then Friday's going to be my five by five work. So yeah, there is rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. But when I stop enjoying that, that's when I switch the program up. Right. I want to always, like, I, I come to the gym. Every time I come to the gym, I'm like psyched. I'm just psyched. And right. For me, that's important. It's a psychological thing for, for me. For sure. Yeah. Well, I think that's important for most people. I mean, if like you were saying, you have to be an entertainer. The person you're training or if you are bored, what are the results that you're going to get out of that? Right. You know? And they're just going to find someone else. Right. And it's tough. <laughs> it's tough to, to be good at something that you don't want to do. Right. Exactly. You know, like, I mean, last fall, I w I'm, ripping, I'm ripping weight off the floor. I'm doing a lot of fun power work. And I was coming in just feeling great. And by, by – January, February, I'm like, holy shit, I just don't feel good. Like, I do not want to grab a bar right now. Like, my bike cat off a of hockey season, I'm like, I'm like, my body's beat up. I just got off the shoot. Like, I just didn't feel right. Like, and I turned around and I'm like, all right, audible time. Like, we're going to move a little bit differently now. And I started doing it. It took me a few weeks. And now I'm like, I'm back, baby. Like, this is great. Yeah, yeah. Did some work capacity where we didn't focus on strength, just focus on kind of like a very educated CrossFit, kicking my own ass for about a block of four weeks. Right, right, and then right. I moved off of that. And I was like, great, I'm back. This is nice. Yeah. I've been mean, getting into the conditioning stuff. I just take certified uh, conditioning coach, Joel Jameson's thing. Yeah, he's and good. I was, yeah, that's been good stuff, man. I he's really, good. I really, that stuff, again, <clears throat> my conditioning was like when I read Jim Wendler, I was like, just push a sled. But like your clients are like, hey, uh, <laughs> can we do something else besides this? That's Soft where it, that's where it gets tough. That's <laughs> you know where I mean? it gets tough. Like tomorrow, my day is gonna be deadlift singles and swings. I like that's that. my. I like that a lot, but a lot of people won't don't like that. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't. Why want are we to, only doing one thing? They're like, okay, why do, we why, do core? Why am I? Do, why am I hitting? <laughs> why am I hitting a single of like 50 percent of what I can be using? I want to push it. I want to push it. Why are you making me do it twenty times? It's like, but now I like. I just enjoy that. For me, it's fun. But you know what? Uh, Joel Jameson. Yeah, I, I did his whole. You know, I did his HRV for a while. Then I got into Val's uh, Omega Wave for a while. I did yeah. that with Charlie for about a year. And uh, that's, you know, it's all good stuff, but it takes a specific client to really be able to, you know, draw themselves to that. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So you talk kind of about like your training, what you're doing with your sure. training, all that. Mm -hmm. um, 
with these like celebrities or just other people you're training, sure. what is it looking like for them? Like, do you approach everyone with a similar philosophy? Is it a all similar different? philosophy? Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's different tools and, and, and different toolboxes. And I understand that certain people, it's tough to get them away from certain areas or if they're coming. Like, like I mean, I don't even like Ryan. Ryan Reynolds has been like the guy. Come on, he's had an amazing physique for all these years. I mean, yeah, Ryan, Ryan. Ryan used to go in and do a, like a lot of ab work as his warm up, and we finally got him in time away from that. I didn't get him away from it in the beginning because that's what worked for him and that's what yeah, if you psycholog- came in right away and took all that away, that's no, you don't do like, that on year okay. one. I'm now yeah, true. I'm I'm now in year uh, you know, seven or eight with I'm sorry, eight or nine with him now. So it's it's a different story and you know, our workouts are way different than they were six, seven years ago. So I think that's kind of what I'm really good at is is understanding where the client is and what they need that day physically and psychologically and just, you know, making them no matter what, it's always been my line. They leave in a better spot than they were when they came in. That's my whole. That's my whole line. I don't care if they complete feel like complete shit. It's like go walk. No, they're paying you for a session. They want to move. Mm-hmm. Let them leave there feeling better. And I, I, ten out of ten times, I always nail that. So to me, that's yeah, important. You never regret usually going to the gym, even if you do something. Like you'll never I, like regret like oh, people I went like shut moved. down. I'm like, well, you were on a plane from Singapore last night. Let's do some foam rolling. Let's do some breathing. Let's do some movement. You know, we can do some light, you know, assault bike, just really light, low to medium intensity, just get you moving, break a sweat. And then you're out of here in 30, 35 minutes and I'll cut the session so short. And they're, I'm like, how do you feel? They're like, actually, I feel really good. Let's keep going. I'm like, no, you're done. Yeah, chill. Go get a meal, <laughs> chill. chill. And you're then I'm seeing you tomorrow, hour right? flight. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing you tomorrow. <laughs> and then they come the next day and they're like, okay, I know why you did that. Still feeling a little beat up. I'm like, exactly. Right, so, right. You know, you got to be smart. You got to be smart. Yeah. There you go. Um, and not if you don't want to give no. too many okay. secrets away, give like a, so like, I have no secrets by the way. Now, honestly, okay, like we, this is something where yeah. with the one thing that I, uh, there, there's specific personal information I would never give on clients, but right. when it comes down to training, <laughs> yeah. I didn't invent this shit. Like, this is not like, <laughs> yeah. it's not like my None diet, like my, <laughs> my diet prep, like it was 300 grams of carbs a day, 275 grams of protein, 90 grams of fat every day for five weeks. That's exactly what I did. You know, nice. and they were all good quality calories. It was that simple food yeah. quality. My carbs were sweet potato and they were white rice. That's it. My proteins were chicken, turkey, and eggs. That's Boom. it. Like I just kept them very simple. I didn't want a lot of volatility. These are not secrets. You know, when I need more fat, I added some MCT oil. No secrets. I You're ever- crazy, man. No, man, I'm nuts. <laughs> MCT oil. How do you think I'm of snorting stuff? it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. Good problem. You have a problem. Worse than your guy with the four loco. That I'm so shocked. <laughs> How do you drink three four loco? My roommate Rich. Good Love Rich. You, buddy. Boom, God, shout God, out. God bless you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so like, give like a week of like, so like a Ryan Reynolds. He comes in, boom. What's a week look like for that guy? Like, what kind of stuff? Are you doing? With are you them? like assess? I don't want to get into too nerdy, but like, are you like assessing them, or do they come in like, hey, I've a fucked up this, this, and that? Um, like, he's pretty I, young and shape. I, you know, I assessed a woman this morning with Cosmo. I mean, I typically always assess someone when they're coming in. Do I follow up? Do I need to follow up with an assessment two or three months away? I, I just don't need to do it because I see them move enough, and for me to give them an FMS score. Sometimes they might go from an 18 to a 17. I don't feel like freaking them out. It's okay. If you're symmetrical <laughs> twos across the board, you're okay. So, you know, um, what do I do with them? I think it depends on their travel schedule. I think it depends on the amount of stress in their life. I think it depends on what they're training for. When Ryan wrapped up Deadpool 2, his training changed drastically, you know, where he likes to do a lot of bilateral work to get put size on. And I'm all for that. But, you know, now it became a lot about, you know, rotational lunges and push-ups to reaches. And we still press, but we press with one arm. And I just got him away. It was just a nice mix-up to get him away from a lot of the bilateral work, the trap bar deadlifting that he was doing. Um, you know, it, for, for him, it was great for his body. It, um, it helped him with pliability is what I normally like to call it. Yeah, kind of yeah. Felt like he, he got a lot looser. Get, got a I mean, you get locked up, dude. Like, you talk really to any... Up. Again, we were out of the Arnold. We were at Westside. Oh, like, God. Any go, power go, lifter. Go watch those dudes, like, just walk around and shake their hand. You're like, dude. <laughs> My this, number one like focus this. with everyone, it, it, it really is, it, it, it's, it's energy and movement. Whether you look at my programming or, like, that's true or not, like, it's energy and movement. When we're starting the workout, we're moving. And we're trying to get you to move in different directions on different days. And it's not something where I'm like, oh, let's just do a reach back for our thoracic rotation. Like, no, I believe that we need to move in different planes and in different (laughs) positions and kneeling and standing. We need to do all this stuff. And it's important because then when you get in that position, you're just completely screwed. You're like, oh, I I can't do it now. Plus, it's boring. Yeah. So, um, you know, someone like him, I mean, right now it's become much more of a restorative workout, less about weight and just more about – Getting him to break a sweat, understanding that, you know, we're going to have you in and out with some cardio done in, you know, 45 to 50 minutes and yeah. just, just kind of like, oh, wow, I feel great. I don't feel beat up and 
Yeah. I'm actually, I could have kept going. I'm like, you're, you're done. So that's <laughs> something I've kind of earned the right to do. Like I wouldn't have done when I was, you know, 22 <laughs> years old. Right, and the client's right. like, oh, we're only 45 minutes in the session. You're done. And he's be like, well, <laughs> are you prorating my session? <laughs> like, yeah. Now they understand that like I'm it. in there doing what needs to be done on that day. On the other hand, I'll have, got, I'll have clients who come in and they'll be like, Dude, I, I can't lift today. Like, let's just fuck, let's crank cardio today. Let's just do it. And I'm like, shit, here we go. I want to, <laughs> you know, I'm on the first climber with, you know, a, a lister for an hour and 15, <laughs> 12,000 feet, which has happened. And we're like, okay, I'm like, Yo, I didn't change my real? shirt. <laughs> yeah, do you work out with them? Or? Sometimes I do. Normally with lifting, I, I, I don't. I, I, we actually have a fun group in here that we call it. It's I've a total joke called the Gym Mafia. And um, we actually do already work with a lot of celebs. Like, Lee F. Schreiber works out with me a lot, you know, right? Ray Donovan, Drew Powell, um, this guy Paul Wesley, who's a big TV star, um, an ex NHL hockey player, George Paris, who's a big brawler. Like yeah. we, we have Sebastian Stan, the Winter Soldier. So I send oh, text, nice. yeah, I send text messages out every night to like ten guys. And that that and crew, that crew's hilarious. It's yo. fun. When My, you were posting shit for a while, you and your boy Tone. Oh, Tone's Tone's <laughs> Tone's a shim, shim, is that shim, him? shim the leader. I took the CFSC <laughs> with him here. <laughs> <laughs> dude, He's a mess. they are nuts. They're dude. nuts. You guys so have a blast. We have, we have, we have, a, we have a blast. But it's like some days, like it's always tough when you're powerlifting when you when you're doing powerlifting with them because you're resting in between sets and everyone's like screaming and laughing. But I love, like I love when I set up these work capacity blocks and they have no like we did um for a month after hockey season this year it was actually probably a month ago we did. Have you done the return of the kettlebell program? No, you're, no. You're, Pavels. This, this is Pavels. Yeah, this is great. It, it, it starts it, each day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, are these clean to press ladders. So you go five one, to one, right? Yeah, no? it's one to five. One but to then five, you're okay. but then we would add in the pull up with it. So we would match a pull up ladder with oh. it. So now you got one to five, as little rest as possible, throwing up, throwing the same number of pull ups in between each set for five rounds. So you're hitting like 150 clean to press ladders, and then you're hitting like. <laughs> You're hitting something like, I think we only did threes or we did, Tone might have done tens on the pull-ups, but we did something like 75 to 100 pull-ups, but you're finishing it in like 15 minutes. That's and it's insane. funny because no one's talking and you're just kind of like in the corner of your eye like sweats tripping Girl's off people's dying. face and they're just dying. You're like, yeah. You guys are talking shit to each other no, too. Like, oh, yeah, no. I'm I'm yelling you at and Tone are brutal. Oh, I, uh, Tone and I are brutal. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> it's so like, we, have, we, have, we, we have stuff we can't even put up on my social. Like, we're going we're gonna to do it one day, but it's just like we're screaming at each other. And it's terrible. Like the other day, he, I was doing some stupid like double bell squat and he slapped my ass. And I was in the hole with like 240 <laughs> pounds, like in a rack. And I dropped the weight and they caught it. And I'm like, don't you ever, ever do this again. And he's sitting there laughing at me like, I don't give a shit. Like, what are you going to do? This reminded me of like college. We all, all of our boys, we always used to go to the Gold's Gym in West Springfield the together best. in Mass. Oh my God. Those are the days. I missed that. <laughs> and I just left alone. But that's what Gym Mafia for us is. It's, yes, it is intelligent training, but we're in here. It's a crew of people from all walks of life. And we just have a great workout and a great time. Lifting with your bros. Seriously, last Friday we're, we're coming here. The club was last Friday. I asked Tiago. The club was jammed. We had like music blasting. Everyone's high fiving, like jumping on each other, <laughs> laughing. Like we we didn't even like we, like the warm up was like blown. We're like moving around, like trying to do cars like on our neck. And, like, <laughs> and we're like oh, finally we're like all right, let, let's just go. But it's such a good energy. That's, the weather was beautiful, and it's like for me that is nothing better. Like, Hell I, yeah. I love yeah. that. Man. So are you still doing the other thing on social media you're kind of known for is like doing the workouts like oh, training outside. on Broadway? Yeah, training on yeah. Broadway. Yeah, I've been doing probably like <laughs> one a week, which you remind me, I got to get one up this week. But uh, yeah, I mean, listen, that's, it's fun. It kind of evolves something stupid. Like I, I remember it was a few years ago and I'm looking out on Broadway and we just finished doing like get ups. And I was like, dude, get a picture of me like throwing a get up on Broadway. And that's when it was kind of born. Like I got yeah. to know Broadway, Tiago took it. It actually looked really cool looking downtown. There were no cars anywhere so it's like me on broadway doing a get up and the straight shot all the way down to the uh the, the freedom towers and um right there i was like oh that's kind of cool like maybe we could start just doing some fun stupid stuff on broadway and like sometimes they almost worked out really bad for us <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> i was about to say man did you almost get hit by a few cars no but i had some cops a few times like i'm, I'm, doing, lunch, say, yeah. I'm doing lunges down mercer street with like 135 on my back and i know where the guy's on the mic and you, you, you know the cops get behind <laughs> you they start yeah. to go, get out of the way and i'm like shit I'm like, <laughs> you're like last set bro last, yeah exactly but the funny part is like no one watches you like people don't even re like this new york they're, they're so dead to it like you're just walking around <laughs> no and, one fight everyone is in their own world i'm doing something crossing broadway last 
sweet. I saw, was band. that the glute band thing? Dude, no one. First off, like you have all the critics like, what are you doing that with your hand? You're extending your hands out. I'm like, are you oh, serious here right we now? Go, dude. Shit. Yeah, like, leave me alone. Dude, what's up with your shoulder like, adduction? Yeah, yeah exactly. Shut like, why are you, uh, you know, your left knee is going valgus. I'm like, dude, do me a favor. I'm like, dude, I'm, I, I just respond to guys now. I'm like, yo, kill yourself. Don't, Chill, bro. Don't be that guy. That's what I said. <laughs> You're annoying. Like, get a life. That drives um, me nuts. But people don't even turn and look at you. They're, they're just like, all right. <laughs> I watched, part the, of that I watched thing. the couple. You guys are doing some nuts shit. And oh, everyone's funny. just like, like yeah. laser vision, continue on what they're doing. And then you get people like, how could you do that? It's dangerous. And I'm like, it's CGI. They're like, seriously? I'm like, yeah, I'm dead serious. <laughs> like, nah. <laughs> nah. It's not CGI, but yeah, you, you believe balls, me. So, you <laughs> <laughs> so you got to bust balls. You, um, you had a couple of things. I know you specifically wanted to <clears throat> kind of get into. So why don't you, why don't you go uh, there? What do we want to talk? Oh, the playbook app. Oh, yeah. Oh my God, at, man. Psyched. That's um. I've been I'm following you. And you post people like so. Is it just explain it for people that don't know? So what it playbook is. is it's like a Netflix model. It's a nine dollar ninety nine cent subscription a month. Uh, you join it. Uh, your workouts, uh, suit up workouts for the guys, tone up workouts for the girls. I mean, in all honesty, everyone can just do the suit up workouts. But I think a lot yeah. of a lot of the women out there get a little bit Marketing, nervous. Yeah. yeah, I think they get a little bit nervous, and it's fine. They're like, well, you know, you're barbell benching and you're deadlifting. I'm like, these are all great things for women to be doing, and I do it with them, but. I get where you're coming from, so let's walk you off the ledge a little bit. And so I came up with Tone Up. So the the thing that I love about Playbook, it's a way for me to be able to engage with these people every day through social. Yeah. Uh, they send me questions. It, it, there's one button that I hit that it ties into my Instagram where I can do like a story. And I'm just like, hey, Jim, what's up? Uh, you asked me that question about uh, developing abs, and this is what I want you to do. And you kind of answer it, and you hit another gotcha. button, tags them on it. So it's a great way to be able to engage. But every month, you get the woman gets their suit up, uh, tone up, guys get their suit up, and then you get your almost like your bonus workouts, what you're requesting. So some people are like, oh, I travel a lot, or I need a workout in the hotel room. And we make those workouts, and we launch them on there. So you not only get your set routine, but you get mobility workouts. You get cardiovascular workouts. You just get things that people want to have access to that are just going to help them with whatever their goals are. So that's been going That's been going really, really well. Yeah, I've seen you post some stuff in your stories. There, yeah, I think one woman in particular lost a ton of weight, correct? I don't know. I remember oh, my her God. Name. Laura Summer. So this woman reached that's, out to me. Yeah. yeah, so this woman reached out to me via social three years ago and she was just really friendly and always messaging and you could just tell who's warm and who's really like a, genuine a genuine yeah. yeah so finally she reaches out and she's like you know i'm i'm you know, I, gotta, I gotta lose a lot we'll make a long story short three years ago she was 872 pounds and yeah eight, eight, 872 and she weighed in this monday at 428 which is fantastic. 872. Yeah, she had cardiomyopathy, cane, couldn't walk much, uh, Chicago. I'm like, I'll write you a diet. She's like, I don't have money. Like, I, I'm not, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, that's fine. I wrote her a diet. She's like, no, Don, I don't have money. I'm on food stamps. I'm like, okay, I'll redo this. <laughs> so I, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, let me, let me redo it. So, um, but, you know, she's been following. I, I'm shocked on her discipline because she legitimately hasn't broken at all. I'm really excited because True Form, the treadmill company, is going to send her a complimentary treadmill that we're going to deliver out to her because she lives, yeah. in, she lives in Chicago and it's really cold there. So I think just being able to get her inside and walking. So right now, like, you know, it started with walking and then she couldn't walk. She can only walk with a cane and then we removed the cane, and she, but she couldn't get down the driveway without the cane. Now she's walking without the cane. And um, I'm like, can you get off the ground? And things that we take for granted. She's like, yeah, I can. I'm like, well, time it. And she's like, it took me 15 minutes. I'm like, okay, we'll work on that. What side? To my right side. Well, let's try your left now. And she would do it by. So now it's like she's walking the stairs, stairs, and she's uh, doing glute bridges, and she's getting on and off the ground on both sides, and she's going for walks, and you know, it's Damn, starting. Beautiful. Yeah, it's it's, it's, That's like it's simple, freaking awesome. Beautiful, it simple, works. Simple, and it's changing her life. And her diet, like I'd show you her her diet. It's like she wakes up in the morning, she has eggs, she has some vegetables, she's having a tablespoon of olive oil because she wants to get some more good fats in, and Garden of Life is great enough. Uh, to send her all these, you know, organic non-GMO bars and shakes, and so she's nice. supplementing those. And in the lunchtime, she's having some salad. And listen, is it all organic? No, but who gives a shit? Like she's doing great. <laughs> right, and, right. You know, she's uh, she's trying to consume more water, and you know, at times she's a little stressed out, and she's. Uh, you know, it is what it is, but she's been great. And my goal, I told her, I says, uh, she, you're going to leave me one day. I'm like, I'll leave you when you get down, down below 200 pounds. And even then, I'll never leave you. So we, we, got, some, we got some room to go. So That's crazy. Yeah, it's cool. It's a good feeling. Phenomenal. Um, something you mentioned before, which I thought was cool. Um, you know, you, uh, you have this high profile, um, you know, celebrity trainer. You're training all these people. Sure. It's nuts, right? But you mentioned <laughs> before, I didn't invent this shit, right? Like, right. You, you didn't make anything up. Um, 
what would you say to someone, maybe whether they be new or, or starting up training, strength training, whatever, maybe like your top two or three like main guidelines for like keeping it simple, strength training, doesn't have to be great. You know, be a sponge, but on the other hand, like you can very easily be torn in a hundred different directions. I mean, you, if you take yeah. someone and you throw, you throw a trainer in a CrossFit and he just gets that feeling, he's going to love there and he's, he's going to leave there and love CrossFit. You know, then if he goes and goes into Boyle's, one of Boyle's, you know, internships, it's a little different than CrossFit. They still move. They still work hard. So it's still smart training, but it's like, you know, I know what direction I would send someone. I'm a big Boyle fan. So, you know, I love what, I love what he does. So be a sponge and understand that when you're speaking to a so-called guru, like they still have a lot to learn also. Like I don't, if you, if you notice, I don't like it or I don't never refer to myself as an expert. I'm a professional. I'm still a student. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like White belt mentality. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm a professional and I'm still a student and I, I'm still learning stuff every day. So just be a sponge, but just be passionate. I think if, if someone comes into me now and they're not the smartest person, but they are passionate, like I'm going that way nine, nine out of 10 times, yeah, right? yeah. especially not, if they're good. And I guess sit there and people. be like, where's your degree from? Yeah. How many okay. certs oh, do you have? Well, yeah. blah, blah, blah. What <laughs> certification do you recommend? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I, I like... <laughs> I guess CSCS and ASM. Like I don't, I don't, I don't even know what answer to give because yeah. it's like even with like kettlebell people ask me about kettlebells. Would you recommend RKC or SFG? Like I recommend who the better instructor is. Like if you're going to yeah. Max Shank, like you got a choice of going to see Max Shank. Like go to Max Shank. Yeah. Like, the guy's like 25, 26 years <laughs> yeah, old. Right. He could do a ton with his body, and he's he was here uh, uh, like last year. And he's a tremendous person, and he happens to be to that. really, really good. <laughs> yeah. at, he's really good at what he does, and he's a good teacher. So you know, there's I think like anything else, like just go to the good instructor and don't worry so much about the piece of paper. Like it's not about. You know, I saw a guy the other day he post like I'm a certified you know mace instructor now, and I'm like, okay, great. Like I'm glad that, I'm glad you're proud of that. Like that's fantastic. But you know, don't do it for the certificate. Do it because you can. This is help another people. tool to help you. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, too, with that, I mean, you know, I think certificates going and learning holds a lot of weight. But like this shit, you don't exactly need. You don't need a certificate to learn this stuff. Like internet, like the access of information we have now. You don't like. Neat. You could learn this stuff anyway. Dude, in 2009, when I was in college, I was reading everything off Elite FTS that Dave Tate wrote. And, He's good. And Louis Simmons, because I was reading good. Louis PDFs and kind of like, nah, I don't really know what's going on, but I think I understand. Yeah. And Dave was basically his translator, and then I would go to there. And that's how I programmed and trained. I was like, this is perfect. I, I went to I, I wish I went to Louis. I went to listen to him in Philadelphia at a high school. I drove whatever it was, two hours one night with another couple coaches here. It had to be, shit, it, it had to be eight, nine years ago. Was that a high school in Philly? He went to a high school. Dude, it was awesome. Oh, it yeah. Was, it was great. awesome. He's amazing. It was awesome. We went into a cafeteria. Like, this is not like a new cafeteria, like an old cafeteria with like the yellow floors and like yeah. oh, the yeah. big long tables. The that brown moved. tables that fold. And they had exactly, it's exactly <laughs> yeah, what it was. High and school. I see. It, was, it was like an old school cafeteria. And there's Louis Simmons speaking. To, and it wasn't a big crowd. It was probably 40, 50 people. And he had a West Side guy set up with like selling shirts. And they could not have been any cooler. And They're we just sat there. Man. They, were, they, were, they were awesome. And he was very open. He was like, if you Dude. think you can't get, if you think you can get to uh, <laughs> these numbers without performance enhancing substance, and you are surely mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> and you're sitting there and you're like, oh shit. Okay. I just you love just when he that? rattles off numbers. He goes, top 10 records. We got nine of them yeah. in this gym. <laughs> yeah, that's how he speaks why, to. Why don't they listen to me? I'm 67 years old and I had 83 <laughs> surgeries. <Yeah. laughs> and I'm still PR. <laughs> that was the best too. Like uh, again at the Arnold, we're at Westside. Now Westside, other gyms were charging a ton, right? In that area. Yeah. They're like $30 for a day pass. Yeah. Guess what? Westside was yeah. free. Yeah. And he came and sat there and we, we were the, just 30 people yeah. asking him, He's a hey, different what guy. about this? What about this? And he stood there for four hours and answered everyone's question. Yeah, but the guys them. who are great, like the guys, the people, not guys, the people who are really great in the industry, they all have that in common. Right. Because when you go and you, like you brought up Charlie or I brought up Boyle or... Not to toot my own horn, but even with with me, you let show us, up. I'm you getting, let us come here. No, let yeah, us. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to have you here. But I'm, but I'm, but I'm saying like, it's like who the hell are we, man? We're we're, we're just fitness <laughs> professionals. Like I own a gym. Like yeah, I'm lucky enough to be part of a few brands. Like I'm not an expert. I'm a professional. Like there's things a, no, a level of humility here, and always keep your door open. You never know at some point. Like like I, I don't want someone rejecting my son or treating him like shit like yeah. if my son has a question or he's passionate about something and he goes up to a guy that he looks up to like i don't 
want that guy to treat him like crap. That would make me feel awful. Like yeah. treat people like you want to be treated also. So I think that's it. That's important. When we listed those people, especially Boyle, like Boyle, after I talked last year, I'm like, Mike, what'd you think about the talk? And he's like, it was really good, Don. I'm like, okay, Mike, um, what'd you think about the talk? He's like, all right, let's go get a beer. And I'm like, great. So we went out and he ended up getting me cranked and we sat there and he's like, you need more nuts and bolts. Like you're, you're over now the, uh, the experience and the life stories, like get more nuts and bolts. Now this year, like the reason when Chris asked me what talk do you want to give? I'm like, I don't want to give a talk on fitness because it really is. It's like everyone thinks they're better than the next guy. I'm like, I want to give a talk on something where I think I can really teach people and I can benefit them how to monetize their fitness business and teach about social. So this year, yeah, it's not the- like, oh, post three times a day. No, this year it's nuts and bolts. Like I'm basically like, this is what you need to do. This is how you monetize your Instagram. This is the volume that you have to do it at. These are algorithms that I've gone through with Instagram headquarters, with Facebook headquarters. I've sat with them on numerous occasions. These are numbers you guys don't have. This is something called dwell time on a video. This is something where you know they can actually analyze how many times a follower is jumping on and off your page. I found that out once. So my average follower, oh, shit. My, my average follower jumps on and off an Instagram page 38.5 times a day. And you start looking at this. So, well, wait a second. Well, after 10 seconds, 75% of them jumped off. Well, what is that telling me now? Well, wait a second. Um, what's dwell time? Well, IG, if, if your video is running for three seconds and my video is running for six seconds, Instagram is going to see that and they're going to start pushing more people there. What percentage of non-followers came to your page? People are like, what are you talking about right now? No, these are things that you have to look at because yeah, this we gotta is- hang out no, after this. Come, <laughs> come, you guys got to come to- Honestly, come to- I'm yeah. talking this year in, in Rhode Island and I'm talking in Chicago. Try and come to one of the talks. I already got my slideshows done. I got a you, wedding for stupid well, you guys Rhode come Island. Up here, you guys come up here. You guys come up here at another time and I'll run you guys through the presentation. That's but, sick. But, uh, and I'm, I'm promising you that. But there are so many things that if you start getting these analytics, then you could start figuring out how to curate- your content. And I'm not saying be something that you're not, but I know that there's pillars. I know that every, every one of us, I have my pillars. What are my pillars? It's fitness. It's nutrition. It's funny. It's family. It's lifestyle. Because of my brand. And now every single day I am pumping those pillars. Mm -hmm. And when a post comes out, yeah. Um, training on Broadway, that's training. That's funny. That fits into my pillars. Me with my mom, uh, uh, me with my, with my son, uh, I'm wearing his long shorts, uh, short shorts and he's wearing my long shorts. That's family because that's telling a picture of who I am and you start painting this consistent picture and then on stories all day long, I'm pumping content. My whole thing is like, I want to educate people. I want to get the person off the couch and I want to, if someone can come to my post every day and pick up one thing that I'm hitting a home run, if I can repost a success story every day. I've made it in this world. I'm up to one repost a week of success stories. I'm not there yet. So there's things that people look at me like, you're successful. I'm like, I'm not there yet because I know what I, what I have to put in to be able to, to get the most out of this whole thing. So my talk's going to be fun and I'm excited for people to come listen to it. Hopefully, hopefully uh, more than five people show up. It's going to be a good one. Sure. <laughs> I, I have a feeling they will. I hope so. <laughs> I have a be feeling. Good. I'm going to be pretty right. enthusiastic about it. So Let's take a quick break. Sure. Bathroom break, whatever we got to do. Yep. Come back and we'll wrap it up. Done. All right. Want more of the Strength Squad? You can check out all of our social media on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, check us out on YouTube where you can watch all of your favorite Strength Squad videos. Don't forget to leave a five-star review on iTunes and Stitcher. Stitcher? I just met her. We would like to thank our friends at Plant Warrior Protein, official sponsor of the Strength Squad podcast. Plant Warrior plant-based protein is easier on your stomach and contains a complete amino acid profile that helps you grow, maintain, and repair your muscles. It gives you 18 grams of protein per serving, and it's made from a blend of rice, pea, and hemp. Plant Warrior pledges to plant one tree for every item you purchase at their online store. Head over to plantwarrior.co, that's plantwarrior.co, and use the promo code STRENGTH10 to get 10% off of your purchase. That's promo code STRENGTH10 for 10% off of any Plant Warrior purchase. Welcome back, crew. Uh, We are back with Don Saladino. And we are about to wrap it up with a segment we called Lightning Round. Oh, fan no. favorite. Oh, Everyone shit. loves this one. Yeah. <laughs> fan favorite. Uh, so, are you ready, dude? I hope so. Coming at you quick. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm nervous. All right. Texting or talking? Talking. On the phone, in person? In the per- in, in, in the person. In, in person. The person. Jesus Christ. Whatever the person means, man. <laughs> in person. I like face to face. Favorite right. day of the week? Ooh, Saturday was the first thing that came to mind. Nice. Okay. Why? Right. Time to hang with my kids. There you go. I knew that was there coming. There you go. Yeah. 
Are you like a are you like a favorite day of the week is Monday type guy or no? Because it's not really. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so if, you're, you. if you're still asleep on a Monday, get up and get on your grind. Well, you normally, you like slept in during the weekend, and you're feeling you kind of out of routine, and you wake up Monday, and you're like, all right, I'm a little shot now. No, yeah. <laughs> let's be real here. Like I get the message, but it's like, don't live for the weekend. It's like, I don't know, man. The weekend's pretty fucking dope. <laughs> you just asked me what my favorite day of yeah, weekend. Yeah. I just said Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> uh, favorite favorite city in the u.s besides the one you live in who uh has or to be one or on a gym in <laughs> i like listen i, I love san diego mm. everyone says that's that. a big one everybody i like chicago why do you like san diego um friends who live there the weather i i, I love this city called encinitas which my good buddy rob yang and yeah. max shank actually lives in i, I oh, visit yeah. rob all the time it's by tpi and one of my it's just this you know they've got okay gyms but like the the, the surf, the beach, the restaurants, ah. the grocery stores. I mean, like, you get good, clean food. It's just the weather's perfect. I mean, I, I would say San Diego. Solid. Damn. Thank you. San Diego, <laughs> Wales vagina. Drink it in. <laughs> Drink it in. Uh, nickname you used to get called or Donnie still Baseball. Donnie, Donnie Baseball. Baseball. I got called Donnie Baseball in college. <laughs> I got called Dino in high school. Obviously, my last name is Saladino. So, yeah, Donnie Baseball or Dino. Those are my two nicknames. And that came from college baseball? College baseball was Donnie baseball. Yeah, yeah. Donnie baseball. And how did that come about? Long I played baseball in college, so. And that was it. There was no like story behind that no. or anything. Just <laughs> Donnie baseball. A lot of people. A lot of my friends call me Dino. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Dino. Dino. Interesting. I love it. Last song you listened to. Ooh, God! It was probably a few. Oh, uh, oh. Um, the last song I listened to was um, uh, "What It Takes" by Imagine Dragons. Damn. I kind of mm-hmm. I remember because I was listening to that song with my son yesterday, and then coming into work today when I got off the train, I threw it on because I was just I had a good moment Classic. with my son, so I was thinking about him. There you go. That's cool. Nice. Are you a Drake fan? No, not really. Mm. I, I I love I <laughs> love the show's uh, no. over. <laughs> no, 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 he's no, he's good. Um, I'm more of a. I grew up like a metalhead. Like I'm like really? I, I, oh shit. Yeah, so I grew up. Who's like, your Who's your My two favorite us? groups growing up was Metallica and Pantera. Damn, dude. Yeah. All right. So okay. Man, there's okay. nothing like Walk by Pantera. That's there's, a pretty damn good song. I've been, <laughs> to, I've been to eight Metallica shows and I think eight. I think exactly eight Pantera shows. Oh shit. So, but but I I listen to everything. I listen to Bob Marley. I listen to you know Jimi Hendrix. I mean a, 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 everything. Pearl Jam. I love it all. But nice. Oh, Pearl Jam. I'm a born I'm a born metalhead. Man. <clears throat> favorite holiday. Christmas. Okay. Why? <sighs> the memories, man. My, my, my parents, my grandparents. I mean, Thanksgiving is a great holiday, but just, I don't know. Yeah, come on, man. You, you know, Santa Claus, my kids now with Santa Claus and, and, oh, and Christmas yeah. Eve and even church on, on Christmas Eve. And it, it's just like the whole experience is just special to me. So yeah, I just, yeah. I, I talk about it and I, and I smile, but it's just, it's just my time for my family. I got a big family. So we all get together and everyone's happy and we normally get semi drunk and, uh, <laughs> You know, or very fun. drunk. Damn, dude, or very get, drunk. Get all choked up over <laughs> very, here. Yeah, no, no. I got a little tear in my eye right now. <laughs> How long does it take you to get ready in the morning? Oh, man. I, uh, oh, wow. This is, I, I probably have this to a T. I can leave my whole routine. <laughs> um, it probably Please takes do. me. Uh, all right. So, um, go through the routine. So, uh, today I woke up. Uh, I'm sorry. Typically, I wake up at 4 a.m which is early. Okay. Uh, what I do is I drink a, a, a huge glass of water, take my probiotic, go through a 12 minute stretching routine, take a shower, get out of the shower, get dressed, go downstairs, put my food on the skillet on medium, let my food heat up, get on my Beamer recovery system for eight minutes, do my belly breathing and my, uh, it's called a microcirculation system. So I go through that for eight minutes. By the time I'm done with the eight minutes, I sit down, I start eating, I start going through emails and then at that time, it's about 4.45, and I'm in the car driving to the train station where a car service picks me up at 5 a.m. three mornings a week. The other two mornings a week, it's 5 a.m. and everything, and then I got to be on the train by 5.51. So that's my – that's how long it takes me. So anywhere from 45 to <laughs> – That to, was yeah. amazing. I lay, my clothes out, I lay my clothes out the night before. My food Like the first all, day of school. Dude, that's every great. night, it's like clockwork. My, my, Damn, my wallet, my wedding ring – my chain, <laughs> my car keys are in the same spot on the butcher block downstairs. My whatever shoes, my sneakers I'm wearing for the next day or shoes are sitting in this specific spot. My clothes are laid out. Like, I kind of get, I get that. I'm a, little, I'm a little, I'm a little. I have to be like that in the morning. I'm like a machine. I just like go, go, go. And if I, if I, if I don't do that, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to 
forget something. So I, I get freaked out. Damn, dude. This is like one of those Batman training montages. Like exactly the, what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I was aiming for, it's too. like when they're getting dressed in the beginning, when the credits are rolling. Yeah, every single time. <laughs> is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers? No. <laughs> now we're getting out of here. I hand. don't know. Do Who doesn't think? like animal crackers? The ring was the, uh, the, the old school, what were they? The Ringling Brothers, Grandma, those... The box, the red oh box. Oh my god, I love those. Yeah. <laughs> red box. That's but a, right. but a vegetarian would probably find something wrong with that. Yeah, They're like, yeah. we Nowadays, should be destroying like molds of animals. And we <laughs> it's like representation. This is terrible. It's like I love I love elephants. And you just <laughs> ate one. It's not real, but you still ate them. Like it's probably meat, meat is murder. <laughs> uh, first celebrity crush. This is a good one for him. Never. <laughs> no, I, 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 I got to be honest, man. I, I Oh, God, this is really funny. Not, never, you're not anything as a kid. Come on, hot man. chick in a movie. Come on. You know who I loved as a kid? And Hulk I ended Hogan? Up, no. <laughs> oh, it's just got to be a male or a female. <laughs> it's up to you. Whatever you want. You, know you, you, know you, you, you know who I loved as a kid? Um, he's actually someone I became really good friends with, and... Um, I went on the train, but like as as a young kid, I thought Tori Wilson was like you know. Oh yeah, she's fantastic. Now I, I, <laughs> she's dating like one of my really good buddies. Classic. Now and I hooked them up, which I'm proud to say. Nice, so, atta boy. Um, she's she's the best. But I always looked at her as a young age. And I'm like that 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 woman's unbelievable. So that's probably the closest thing. There we go. But, See. But, okay, so I gave you something. I'm with yeah. you on that. Uh, do you snore? Um, my wife says I do. <laughs> <laughs> so back sleep? Some, you sleep on your back? No, I gotta sleep on my side. So I think Same. it really, it really, it really depends. It, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. She says so. I don't trust back sleepers, dude. I don't trust them. I can't. It's scary. My best friend <laughs> in college sleeps on his back, and he looks like a freaking vampire. Like he sleeps with his arms across his chest. <laughs> big Italian kid, big nose. So it's like I scary. can't do it. I heard like Brian Shaw has to sleep on his back. Jesus Christ! Because he was like choking during his sleep. <laughs> Jesus. I, don't know. I mean, you're 440 pounds. You got to figure something out. <clears throat> My lord. <laughs> Favorite junk food. This could be like, it doesn't have to be like candy. It could be any you know, vice. Any vice, you know, ice cream, pizza, pasta, Mexican food, Chinese food. I'm like, I like it all. Like all together <laughs> in one bowl? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Favorite Go. childhood TV show. Wow. Um, I loved, uh, God, I love Roadrunner and the Wile E. Coyote, man. Um, holy geez. I love Knight Rider. Night Rider was awesome. <laughs> That's some dope stuff, right dude, there. Dude, Night Rider was awesome. <laughs> the I love the fan. car hustle. But I love them. I love the Hoff. Um, <laughs> you know, some of the wrestling shows as kids. I love Scooby Doo. All right, yeah, I probably right. go on and on. I mean, I'm just I'm saying what's popping into my head the quickest. Maybe <laughs> but I no compl- favorites, just like a bunch. Yeah, I loved nice. He Man. I loved He Man as a kid. Okay, okay. Kind of explains that a lot. A I love the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> Probably explains also, a lot. Also explains a lot. <laughs> These are all, yeah. We're all coming it. back to... <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, final one here. Last mm-hmm. Halloween costume. Oh, I know what it was. Um, oh, God. Uh, it was the guy from Despicable Me. I went for as my <laughs> kids. Gru? Gru, like the main dude? No. Or a minion? Might have been a... That's min- all I know. No, it wasn't a minion. <laughs> yeah, it might have been... Oh, God. I forgot. I got to get the... He was wearing... I was wearing like orange. It was like a joke for my kids. Was it like I a family Max. costume? Like yeah, it was you like all a, did Despicable no, Me? No, no, uh, they all did something. I, I don't even know. I don't even. It, it was something from Despicable Me, and it was years ago. I've done. I've done masks. I do this thing every year where I buy a mask and I scare the living shit out of my kids. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like legitimately, like I'll come home like in the dark wearing like some like scary like it'll fucking scare the shit out of you, and I'm just like I'll just be standing in front of like a window, and they'll be like watching TV, and I know I'll just start knocking on the window. Oh like, my! One time, dude, uh, my you're... wife got so pissed off at me. <laughs> Ran, they ran hysterically crying. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> my wife comes out. She's like, "Donnie, you son of a bitch!" <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Your kids are shaking in the bedroom right now. And then I came in and I was like, lifted it off. And then they thought it was after like 15 minutes. They thought it was funny. And they got to get really calm down. But building trust in the Saladino asshole. It's the only one way to do it. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that's going to wrap it up with Don Saladino today, guys. Um, before you go, first, thank you so much for having us here. My pleasure. Thanks, Thanks for, for being me. on. I appreciate it. Um, and plug your stuff, man. Like, where can people find yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, just go, just come check out my Instagram page, Don Saladino. Just keep it really simple. It's kind of, we'll steer you to everything else. If you guys got any questions, uh, just DM me um, and I'll get back to you. It might not be quick, but I'll get back to you. Don't worry. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Thank yeah, you guys for joining so us, and we'll yeah. see you next time. Good luck. Deuces. Peace.